synthesis of epoxides. Ethylene oxide, one of the few epoxides synthesized on an industrial scale, is prepared by passing a mixture of ethylene and air or oxygen over a silver catalyst. And this method works only for the production of oxidane or ethylene oxide from ethylene. As a result, other methods have been developed for the production of epoxides. Epoxides can also be synthesized using intramolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. This reaction right here is a very famous reaction, which is basically the electrophilic addition uh, reaction for the formation of halohydrate. So in the first step, the alkene molecule will react with chlorine to form a chloronium ion. So this is our chloronium ion. And in the next step, a nucleophilic substitution reaction will happen with water being the nucleophile, which goes and attacks in the side that's opposite to that of the um, chloronium ion, right? And it's going to break open this ring because of which the two bonds are going to be in opposite direction or they are, they are going to be in anti-direction. And then in the next step, the base comes and abstract one of the hydrogens and it's going to lead to the formation of a chlorohydrin. Once the chlorohydrin is formed, we can react it with NaH, which abstracts the hydrogen from the OH and thrusts the electrons onto oxygen, thereby forming the alkoxide ion. And this alkoxide ion is going to act as a nucleophile, doing a SN2 reaction, forming the epoxide. This is also called as intramolecular Williamson's eta synthesis because for Williamson's eta synthesis, we need to have an alkoxide, right? We need to have an alkoxide and we need to have the alkyl halide. Since the alkyl halide and as well as the alkoxide are present exactly in the same molecule, this is called as the intramolecular Williamson's eta synthesis. Epoxides can also be synthesized by the electrophilic addition of peroxy acid to alkene. When you say peroxy acid, it is going to have one extra oxygen in a carboxylic acid. The commonly used peroxy acid is MCPBA, which is metachloroperoxybenzoic acid. The, uh, there are two important products which are obtained in this reaction. One is our epoxide and the other one is a carboxylic acid. Let's apply the same thing for the reaction between cyclohexene and peroxy acid. Here in this case, we get cyclohexene oxide and the corresponding carboxylic acid. The mechanism for this reaction happens in a concerted fashion where bond breaking and as well as bond forming happens all at the same time. One of the oxygens in peroxy acid is electron deficient. Therefore, it is able to accept a pair of electrons from the double bond. And this is going to cause the weak oxygen-oxygen sigma bond to break and delocalize those electrons onto form a new carbon-oxygen double bond. And this pi bond is going to break and it's going to pick a proton. The electrons that are left behind as the OH bond breaks add to the other sp2 carbon, thereby forming the epoxide. Now this mechanism for the addition of oxygen to the double bond to form the epoxide is analogous to the mechanism of the formation of a cyclic intermediate, which is the halonium ion formed in the electrophilic addition of halogen to alkenes. Now, another important thing about this reaction is this reaction is a stereospecific reaction, which means cis alkenes is going to give only cis epoxides. And similarly, trans alkenes is going to give only trans epoxides. An important way to synthesize epoxides is through Sharpless epoxidation, which is an enantioselective reaction. And this reaction was developed by Barry Sharpless, and he was awarded a Nobel Prize in 2001 for his exemplary work uh, on this enantioselective synthesis of two, three epoxy alcohols from primary and secondary allylic alcohols. The reagents that are used in short plus epoxidation are tertiary butyl hydroperoxide, which is going to act as an oxidizing agent and must be present in molar amounts. And the second one is titanium tetraisopropoxide. And the third one is diethyl tartrate. But remember, tartaric acid is, has got two 
chiral centers and excess as three stereoisomers. And out of the three stereoisomers, two are going to exist as a pair of enantiomers and the third one as a meso compound. Now, the form of tartaric acid which is used in Sharpless epoxidation is either pure plus diethyl tartrate or minus diethyl tartrate. Titanium tetraisopropoxide and diethyl tartrate combine to make the active catalyst and are present in lesser amounts. They are generally between like 5 to 10 mole percent. Now, what is remarkable about the Sharpless epoxidation is that it is a stereospecific reaction based on the diethyl tartrate that is added. If we use minus diethyl tartrate, and it's going to lead to the formation of this enantiomer A, but if we use plus diethyl tartrate, it is going to lead to the formation of the enantiomer B.